very excited to, to go into our segment, our hygiene focus segment, of course, with Salima Jaffa. Now, we, this is already episode five where we speak about hygiene and we speak about women. Now, today we continue our journey of preparation and anticipation as we get into the personal hajj experience and journey of Sister Salima Jaffa. Now, she's a project coordinator for Planet Mercy South Africa and a student of the Alawi Husseini Nanawi Zawiya. She will also touch on women and hajj and hajj is a folk, um, hajj in focus is a segment exploring the meticulous planning, spiritual reflection and community support that characterize the hajj preparation process. Assalamu alaikum to you, Sister Salima. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And, and I know, you know, and why why I'm so excited? Because it's like you've, you've just been. It was last year that you've been on Hajj, right? Alhamdulillah. Yes, so my sure. sister and I, we um, we did our Hajj last year. Yeah. And we're very, I'm very excited to be here to share a little bit about that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So it's like yesterday. It's all fresh. So share your personal story of performing Hajj. Um, and, and also, I mean, you're, you are still young, mashallah. So what motivated you to embark on the journey? And, and we, there's a lot that I'm going to be asking. But let's first maybe, before we speak about your personal story of performing Hajj. Now, nowadays it's it's all about you know that waiting period like the seven years waiting eight years waiting so now um um it's about you need to register you need to register you know why because it's a seven year wait and it's a 10 year wait but that's not the the, the proper near to make right so what motivated you to to embark on this journey um you know to be quite honest um my sister and I, we had just sort of started working and um, we graduated from university and um, we both thought, you know what, we'd really like to travel. That okay. was actually our motivation. Yes. We'd really like to travel. And we were having a conversation around traveling and we thought, um, but we know that Hajj is a fard. We know that Hajj is something that everybody has to do if you are by the means to do so. Um, so how would we feel about traveling or seeing the rest of the world? Inshallah, we need to still get there. I mean, I mean. <laughs> but, but how do we feel about um, pursuing those dreams when our baseline obligations as Muslims has not been fulfilled? And at the time, I mean, obviously a, a trip maybe to another place would not be maybe as costly as Hajj. Um, and so at the time we didn't really have the money because students um, of course, and we just we just Finish. recently started working and you know so we're still saving up and we just thought you know what as long as we've made the intention that that was honestly our, our thought as long as we've made the intention but we also realized that intentions in the heart is that's very very important but you have to put the effort in and without the effort the intention is not necessarily just going to happen you know Turn miraculously mm. so we both thought that you know before we make any intentions of planning any trips anywhere else our niya needs to be the far hajj because that is something that is compulsory that we have to do as muslims um and so in 2015 alhamdulillah my sister and i we put our names down with very little money in our bank <laughs> accounts with uh, with no mahrams with no um plans as to you know when would we be accredited but we just thought we've made our intention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed that this is something as muslims we need to be doing and bismillah we're going to just put our names down and it will happen when it's meant to happen and you know inshallah we need to work towards it but our intention is there and so that's really how it started and i think um one of the conversations that we did have around it was um, this idea around when, when in your lifetime should you be ready for Hajj, um, and, yeah. and I think that <laughs> yes, and I think that's such a you know it's such a difficult thing because I think that on the one hand you kind of do feel like am I am I ready am I not ready mm. and then on the other hand you think am I ever going to be ready. Am I going? Do I know how long my life will be? Do I know how many sins are going to happen between now and the moment I stand on Adifa and then between the time I've left Adifa and my death? And there are just so many unknowns. But what we do know is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mandated for us. We know we need to be. We know we need to work towards our Hajj, and 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 that was sort of the conversations that we were having. You know. Um, in maybe I don't even know if anybody ever told us this, but maybe my perception of it was always that you know Hajj happens at the end of your life, you know you mm. know you you work towards it, you you know you attain your spiritual goals and then you stand on Arafah. Um, but as I started you know learning more even about myself about my faith, I realized but this this is not really what I would like. I don't want to be working towards a what if, 
what if I reach this imaginary goal that I've put out for myself? What if the opportunity comes for me now? And we never know how long our lives will be. So um, those are the conversations that we had. And I'm sure others also have had maybe similar conversations, maybe different conversations. Um, that was a big motivation as to why we took the step and we applied for our Hajj Alhamdulillah. Right. So then last year, poof, you see your name. You've been accredited. So that, then what? <laughs> that, I didn't, it, you know, to be honest, it didn't even happen that way. Oh. Um, so, so, so my sister and I... Um, we so like i said we applied in 2015 yeah, yeah. um and then we realized like people that ap- applied 2014 were getting accredited and our date of accredited like when we applied was coming up closer um and we weren't sure would we be able to go um because you know neither of us are married and we don't have any brothers so you know will we be able to go on our hajj and subhanallah like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just open I, it, it, the opportunity just opened up for us in such a beautiful way um, that we were called to say, you know what, we know you've been on the list. We know we've been, we've gone past your names on the list because of, um, you know, um, like not being attached to a mahram at the time and all of those things. But alhamdulillah, an opportunity has opened. This is what you need to do if you want to go. And I remember so distinctly, I remember messaging my sister and saying, somebody from Saug said they want to phone me. And she's like, why would they be wanting to phone you? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Just make dua. <laughs> you know, and they phoned us. And alhamdulillah, they said, look, we have this opening. Um and we, we, we remember you've come in, you've explained your situation and would you like to go? And we were both just so shocked because we had thought it's not happening for us now. Our opportunity is not coming up now. This is not our year to be on Arafah. Inshallah our year will come, but it's not now. And it's a little bit heartbreaking also when you experience that. And I know other people have also experienced that where, you, where your heart wants to be there, but you have to sort of just tell yourself, look, it's not my time. When my time oh, comes, it will come. Mm. And we had this conversation and my sister was like, okay, but we have to go. And I was like, can you get off leave from work? Are we going to be able to, you know, it was, it was literally a four week notice, you know, and, and we're like, okay, what is the cost? You know, all of those things were like jumping up at us. But Alhamdulillah, it just fell into place with the support of our family, with the love and us from our parents. Um, you know, it just, Alhamdulillah, everything came together. We were with a group of people that we knew, um, families that we'd, you know, known from before. And Alhamdulillah, the way it came together, like, it's just, again, when your time is there, it just falls into place, Alhamdulillah. Allah invites you and He wants you there. SubhanAllah, it makes, He makes it possible. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, so let's speak about that personal journey and, and also the most challenging moments and how you overcame that. You know, I was I was thinking about this, to be honest. I was thinking about this this morning and all the challenges that one faces on Hajj. Mm. And a lot of them um, are sort of, if I may say, like dunya things. So, you know, like, and I think everybody's kind of heard about it. Like, if you're not used to camping, then <laughs> that could be a bit of a challenge. Mm. If we're not used to very hot climates, that could be a challenge. Mm. If we're not used to... Um, you know, traveling by bus. or There's just so many things that if we are not accustomed to it, those things could be perceived as challenges. But I think, honestly, what is one of the, the biggest challenges, I think, is when you are there, suddenly realizing that you are having an opportunity where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you. All your sins. Like every single bad thing that you've done, every bad thought, oh. every word that you've uttered, every time maybe you, you know, sighed when your parents asked you for something or you backchatted or you gossiped or you, like even the smallest of sins that we overlook, a white lie, um, taking an extra freebie somewhere, you know, things that we don't even think of are sins, but if we really think about it, are sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity here to be forgiven for every single thing. And I think one of the biggest challenges of the Hajj in that moment is feeling that worthiness of his forgiveness. And and again, it's from our perception as people um, that we think we understand forgiveness from our perspective. And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, all forgiving. He, repeat, he repeatedly forgives. He can forgive without holding you to account. But we as people have our limited view of forgiveness. And so I think that actually, to be honest, is one of the greatest challenges of, of, of being there. Because you suddenly just feel like, 
am I worth am I worthy of this moment? Am I worthy of standing on Arafah? Am I worthy of the people back home making dua for me? Am I worthy of carrying the duas of the people back home? There's so many of those questions that come by and overcoming that and really embracing and feeling that um, forgiveness and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for me is one of the most beautiful things of the Hajj. Allah Akbar indeed. Let's speak about um, you know the most maybe one of your most transformative moments and how that impacted your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's probably a lot of there, moments. There is, yeah. there is, but I, th- I think one of the one of the biggest things mm. is sort of like how your your perceptions or your assumptions are challenged, um, and so one of the things that um, again. We speak about we spoke about it a lot before Hajj and years before when we learned about Hajj in Madrasa and at school about how um, and for me that's one of the most beautiful things about the Hajj. For me, I, I kind of maybe separated the ritual and the spiritual, thinking that these two things are sort of separate and and ritual is just a means for spiritual. But in in essence, in the Hajj, these two merge, and the rituals and the spiritual and the physical and the and the emotional they all merge and they all come together in this one experience that you can't really separate from each other mm. um and so for me that was one of the biggest sort of transformative experiences of the hajj realizing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as physical beings with our souls with our hearts with our minds and these are not separate from each other we are we are each one being and all of our, us, our physical, our emotional, our spiritual, our psychological, all of those different aspects, they all need to be in submission to him. They all need to be in service of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his mercy is entirely like for all of us, um, beyond our understanding, beyond our our comprehension. And really, I know it maybe sounds very really like uh, abstract, <laughs> but I think when you stand there on Arafah, you feel it. You do feel it. You you know that there is no way that you would be standing there without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way you would have this experience. There's no way that you'd be with those specific people at that specific moment. Um, and what's so phenomenal is that millions of people around you are Allah feeling Allah. equally special like mm. nobody feels um you know like oh i'm lost in this crowd no everybody knows they are heard everybody knows they are loved everybody knows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited them they are special you know and and that for me is just the beauty and when you experience that i don't think you can ever forget it um, and and for me, that's my wish for everybody <laughs> that amin, they can experience that, inshallah. I mean, indeed, we are uh, in the segment Hajj in Focus with Salima Jaffa. Now, before we take uh, that break, I want to speak uh, about the maybe the highlight, the, the the emotional and the spiritual high of your of the experience. Of course, and that must include the unity and the solidarity with the fellow pilgrims. Um, so I, I, I do think that, that Arafah is, you know, it's the pinnacle of, I think, even of our lives, I think, as Muslims standing on Arafah. Um, but something that really was just so beautiful for us was um, last year, it was, it, at the Hajj, it was very hot. <laughs> it's the desert, it's summer, it's hot. Mm. Um, and th- and that, that has some challenges, especially if we're not accustomed to that kind of temperatures and that kind of, you know, um, of environment. Course, yeah, yeah. Um, and... We were very tired, <laughs> and we we came into Mecca for our tawafal ifada, and um, our leader told us, the spiritual leader told us, we're going to try and get onto the mataf. And mm. I was just thinking to myself, okay, it was on Eid day. I'm thinking, okay, look, I'm I'm going to follow. This seems like a very optimistic mission. <laughs> and this is in the afternoon. Of, yes, in the afternoon, and, and it's packed, oh, oh, and oh. it's you know, it's 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 hujaj. It's people who are there for Eid, like the people in the surroundings. You can see the young children are dressed in their pretty little outfits. Oh, okay. Um, and the mataf is packed, and. I just look at Bismillah, I'm just going to follow. And honestly, like it was one of the most beautiful experiences I've had of my life because um, it was just like the mataf just opened and the tawaf was just so easy and it was just so beautiful. And we weren't being pushed from side to side. We wouldn't, 
I mean, I can't even, I, I feel like I'm losing my words here to just try and explain how beautiful that experience was. And for me, that was one of my absolute highlights. Um, we didn't get to be super, super close to the Kaaba, like touch it, but we got to touch the Maqam Ibrahim. We got to be really close to the Hatim. Um, and for me, that was, it was so like that heart exploding feeling. Um, that was at 100%. Um, it was just, it was magical. And mm. honestly, like, Definitely one of the highlights of my Hajj experience, Alhamdulillah. That's so. So do you. So that do you think the connection was when you did this tawaf, right? You are you are tawaf for your father. That connection with Allah. I, I, you know, that spiritual high was and reached. I, I, well, I don't know. No, 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 I know. I mean, we all, yes, we all, yes. we all oh, hope, we, we all hope yeah. that. Yes, yes. And I, I think, I think also, like when I spoke about like the ritual and yes, the ritual coming yes. together, I think for me that was now my first tawaf after. Um, and this, or almost a realization that the spiritual and the ritual they come together. And so, um, if you think about tawaf, you can think about it very clinically, like very like ritualistic. Mm, mm. Um, you know, technically speaking, you don't even have to have Iman to do it, right? In a very ritualistic, clinical um, sort of way of looking at it. Um, obviously, <laughs> that's not the case. But for me, I think that was a big thing, that the ritual and spiritual w- came together. And you you really feel like, subhanAllah, I'm following the footsteps of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. I'm following the footsteps of Nabi Ibrahim. And you feel that connection. You feel that like... Y- Constantly on the Hajj, you are reminded that this is not just me this year. Of, of, of being part of billions, you know, that solidarity. We, we all nations, whether you speak different languages, you all chant the same thing. Labaik, Allahumma labaik. How, and did that, how, how did that make you feel? You know, again, like it's such a beautiful experience because you can hear everybody chanting. Yeah. But you don't feel like your own voice is diminished. You don't feel like I can't hear my own voice. I need to close my ears to hear. Am I reciting properly? No, you can hear your own voice. Your heart can hear your voice. And you have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear you despite literally hundreds, thousands, millions around you chanting the same thing. Um, And again, that can only be, that's something that you really have to experience. Um, Anybody has to experience it, inshallah. And I really make sure that everybody gets the opportunity. but what I love about the Talbiya also, um, and one of our teachers, um, Sheikh Fahruddin Uwaisi, he explained mm-hmm. it to us many years ago. He said that the Talbiya is actually a response to an invitation. You're not just saying like, I'm here. You're responding to the invitation. and, and Yes, yeah, it's, it's like someone calling you. And, your and, mommy and your daddy calling you. Yes, you know, hundred percent. Salima, and then you'll say, yes, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, yes. And, 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 and you feel that. You feel that. You feel like you have been invited. I'm here because I was invited. I'm here because I was meant to be here. And I'm responding in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to respond. And that's a really special feeling. Um, and honestly, like at the Talbiya for me, like I, it's something I always, um, my heart always feels very attached to it. And I and I do believe that um, one of the things actually in preparation for Hajj, um, my sister and I we were actually mm. speaking about it not too long ago, yeah. was the recitation of Talbiya. Even before we got accredited, um, I used to do it and I used to think there's going to be a day I'm going to recite this, oh, you know, wow. when I'm on my Hajj. But practicing, like, and, you know, just practicing it and feeling it. And the more you do it, I'll be quite honest, even at home, the more you do it, um, you will start noticing that your lips are in sync with your heart. And and that's when that moment, it's, I don't think there are words for it, but we feel it. <laughs> and Alhamdulillah, it's really one of the most beautiful experiences of the Hajj. Radio 76 100.4 FM Hajj in Focus with Salima Jaffa. Um, she is a project coordinator for Planet Mercy South Africa and a student of Alawi Hussein in Nanui Now, um, what a oh, touching story, a very inspirational, motivational story, your journey. And it's like I'm journeying with you, even though I was there 2004. <laughs> but I... I, I Oh, subhanallah, I need to um, just keep away the tears because I get very emotional when we speak about these beautiful moments, subhanallah. So thank you for sharing. I want to go to the WhatsApp line very quickly, 786 10 11 12. Assalamu alaikum. It's very hard to believe when we say Allah provides, but truly we already heard how many people with nothing 
was able to afford this journey of a lifetime. Subhanallah. That's so true. And I, I think, again, it's just a reminder for us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites and he facilitates for people to go, Alhamdulillah, nothing can stand in the way. Nothing can stand in the way indeed. Now, let's let's focus on women on Hajj. You and your sister went, right? And so discuss the unique challenges faced by women performing Hajj. Um, gender-specific facilities and accommodations, safety concerns and perhaps precautions. So I, I think, Alhamdulillah, maybe I, I should just start off by saying that we are very lucky, I think, as South Africans, um, because our travel operators and our and Sauk, they really do look after us as Hujaj when we go on Hajj. Um, and they do look out for the women as well in a special way, like in terms of making sure that women are taken care of. Um, and that really, it, it, it sort of, eases your heart a little bit like like the, the anxiety around being females alone traveling mm. is, I, I think it would be a lot more if we didn't have that in place um and so obviously it is quite different when you don't have um when you when you're traveling as women alone um, but i think also as again as south africans we are sort of used to taking precautions around safety so we know about keeping our handbags close close by about closing our zippers on our bags you know all of those things we we really we <laughs> really much aware of that and so yeah of course but but so those things alhamdulillah i think that they stand us in good stead in terms of the fact that look everybody's coming for hajj and we, we must definitely have the best of thinking of everybody mm. um but people are coming from different places and for different reasons and so you have to take the precautions you have to make sure your belongings are with you um you're not just leaving things anywhere and again as south africans that that comes quite easy <laughs> for us because we are quite used to that kind of thing um but as females um so when we're just talking specifically about the hajj so in in mina the, the tents for the males and females are separate and the bathroom facilities are separate mm-hmm. as well um and so alhamdulillah there, there are amenities but as females if we maybe are not used to certain things it, it can be a little bit challenging and one of the things that um might be a little bit concerning is if maybe not used to using the eastern or the squat toilets um, and i know we don't really like to speak about that and and uh, understandably so but i do think it's something important just to mention yeah. because um if we are not used to do that kind of physical um Exercise. Exercise. Yeah, so it is, it's quite important um, and, yeah. and, and that is something that, that causes a lot of anxiety it for does. women traveling. Mm. But I must also say that um, there's, a, there's a great sense of camaraderie. Um, in the tents in Mina, the, the women together, and everybody's experiencing that same anxiety because most of us don't have those kinds of toilets in our homes. Um, it's and a so, healthier way to go away. <laughs> I, I must believe say. so. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but, but from that again, it's because of that also that the beautiful camaraderie does come together with okay. the, with the ladies, um, and so we find people like sharing tips, saying, "Okay, look, do it this way. Use elastics. Do this. Do that." Um, and and so from a challenge, um, something beautiful comes comes yes. into play, which is the sisterhood that develops um, between the women um, in Mina. And you know, sometimes people would go in pairs, or they'd share their resources, whatever it is, whether it's tissues or soaps or sanitizers or whatever it is. Um, but it's it's again, it's definitely something that, that people do find challenging. But again, like I'm saying, something beautiful comes from it, which mm. is that the women um, share. Mm. And that the sisterhood is 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 um, you know develops, and I remember Absolutely. like seeing a little meme after Hajj. They said like, um, um, you know that you are Hajj sisters when you've asked the somebody to stand outside the toilet door for you. <laughs> and I was like, this is so relatable. <laughs> this is so relatable. Mm. You've asked a stranger to just you know just wait for wait for me or help me yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, and again, it's so beautiful. With something that's challenging, something that's so beautiful comes from it. Um, and then I also think something that is a bit maybe also a bit challenging is that um for females sort of to be walking alone late at night so even though the country is s- supposed to be very safe you know you still feel that sort of sense of like um heightened awareness or mm, sort of mm. you know looking around you and things like that so if you are female traveling on your own i would recommend that you try and make friends with other ladies or also maybe traveling alone or even other women in the group so that you can do things together a lot of times people are also looking for that they're also mm, looking for somebody mm. to go with them to a shop 
or to uh, down to the haram or whatever it is. So you don't really have to do things on your own. Um, you can always try and find somebody to, to go with you. Um, and then also the other thing is also around just um, like sharing ideas and also sharing ways in which things can be done. So every year, alhamdulillah, I think the Hajj, um, the, the amenities improve slightly. Um, and inshallah, it's going to improve a lot more as we go on. Um, mm. and, so, and so we take advice from the people who have gone before and we build on it and we share with each other. So for example, something like really simple, like the wudu bottles and how you manage it. And, you know, if you shafi, must it be sprayed auto or running auto, those kinds of things. Um, the camaraderie that develops between the women, again, those challenges become really small and people help each other and people explain to each other and support each other. And I think that's that's one of the beauties of is Hajj. That wudu, is that wudu um, bottle essential, you think? Oh, 100%. 100%. Is it? 100%, okay. 100%. Because sometimes it's just so difficult to get to a tap. Sometimes the line for the for the wudu facilities is really, really long. Oh. Um, sometimes, um, you know, you might... Um, Especially, like, say, if you're going with a group, mm. and say your group is doing something, and now your wudu breaks, and now you need to take wudu. Now you have to go all the way back out of the masjid to go to a toilet to, you know, refresh your wudu. Or can you, you know, manage with your your water bottle or whatever it is? Um, and so again, that kind of shading that happens really does help to make those challenges that that might be there mm. feel less right. because you are supported. People are helping you. People are sort of telling you, you know, this is how we can overcome it. Mm. Um, and then, and then another thing also, I think that sometimes can also be a little bit challenging is just around. Um, taking a taxi <laughs> and that's I know it's something that seems like very like okay that's like a really silly thing but um again in South Africa if you're not used to taking a taxi with a male driver alone yeah. that might feel really overwhelming mm. and so like for my sister and I for example what we did is we just asked in our group um, is there another couple or is there another two people that also wants to maybe for example go to Majid al Kuba on Saturday or go to the Haram on this day or whatever from Azizia and people are just so kind <laughs> that um, they just you know said okay really no look we are going we're leaving at 10 o'clock meet us at the four year we'll, we'll go with you so whatever anxieties as females you do feel I think it's completely normal because we are um, we are de- definitely we need to take precautions we need to be safe mm. um, but the group and the people that you will be with inshallah they will be so kind and generous that these things can really be um, I don't know they can doesn't have to be a big issue no. you can be assisted you can be supported mm. um and alhamdulillah like that that was our experience i want to perhaps um, um speak about Nima, your experience in in mina itself that in in and then i want to speak a little bit about azizia because um we've heard this many 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 a times um the devil is lost in Azizia. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to first speak about, you know, that in Mina, Mina, you've got just that little bit of space, a little mattressy thingy. Um, talk to us about that and and how, you know, what was what was that experience like? And especially, I mean, you females in that small space, literally your one, your 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 pillow or your mattress is touching someone else's pillow and mattress. Some, if you're not used to that type of setup, yes, it can be a, a bit of a challenge. Yes, and, and and I think also one of the things that is also important is um, if you did if you weren't expecting it or you didn't realize that this is how it's going to be. And so alhamdulillah, like if you go onto Saug's Instagram, you see the pictures. So okay. we were a little bit prepared in okay. that we saw what the tents look like and we asked people, okay, how did you manage your space? Um, but I do think one of the one of the important things is to try and speak to the people around you um, to just express like your um, whatever it is that's maybe bugging you or that you're feeling overwhelmed or whatever it is because really honestly I think everybody wants each other to be the best version of themselves in those days Um, and so it is sometimes a bit difficult to say like auntie 
I'm sorry, like um, your bag is on my pillow. <laughs> what oh, about it is? Oh, what about it is? Right? <laughs> Allah Hamdulillah didn't happen to me, but I'm just using it as an <laughs> yeah, example. Yeah. But but rather than getting yourself angry or mm. getting yourself upset, rather just speak nicely and say like, is it okay if I move it a little bit this way so that I can, you know, um, lie this way or whatever it is rather than letting that anger or frustration sort of build up yeah. because we start out in Mina before we've even gone to Arafah and we're there for more than 24 hours so that kind of frustration like it builds up <laughs> so it's best to sort of you know just speak and just say like um, is it okay if we do it this way and again daily my experience was that people are so warm yeah. and they're so accommodating and really everybody wants each other to to be comfortable and to be the best that they can be sure. um and so that you know we, we okay. just need to we need to look out for each other absolutely um, as well and and i think also another thing that's mm. really important like a practical thing is not to overpack for mina <laughs> not to overpack <laughs> because if yes. we have like two or three bags and we having you know it's it's you don't have a lot of space so just having a small bag with just what you need makes your small space feel bigger because if you're crowding your small space with three different bags and a sleeping bag and a, you know all of those no, things no. um it it can get very overwhelming um i don't want to run out of time we've got very little time left Two minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave the two minutes. What do you want to, that you think, you know, is most important to share in that two minutes? I wanted to speak about Azizia, but maybe if you feel that you want to skip that and it's just maybe in the um, two minutes, do what we need to do. If, before you do, let me quickly, I'd like to acknowledge our, our, our listeners as well on the WhatsApp line. Assalamu alaikum, Jamila, and your guest, Lol, she says, uh, the Eastern toilet is the best. The short queues and mostly clean. We built both Eastern toilet and high toilet in our home. All right. Um Okay, this is a long um all right. Let's let's con- Okay. I'll do our um, wrap I, up. I think I think if if there was one thing that I always that would just be a take home message for me as a reminder for myself as well is just again for those that haven't been please make your intention. Please apply. Um the Hajj is honestly like one of the best things that you can do. Um and don't let worldly things inhibit you or prevent you from taking the step to apply for your hajj bismillah do it apply um and then for those that have been after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your hajj Ameen. and that you get an opportunity to go again um and be an inspiration to the people around you Absolutely. and all of us this is for myself as well um and then i think also just a reminder for myself that um that we need to continue with what we've experienced and i think that's the real tough part and uh, we've alhamdulillah for those of us that have come back we've you know experienced the spiritual high we're feeling really connected um and maintaining that is sometimes quite challenging um mm. and so that's just again a reminder for myself um and i pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everybody that's going Amen. this year may they accept their hajj and make mm. it a means of purification and closeness to him and his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and that he invites us all back to Arafa and to Mecca and to Medina um over and over and over again um and just very quickly yes ah, you, you mentioned Arafa um i'm going to ask um Lukman Lukman 30 seconds Arafa just just give us a, just a 30 second um you know your your highlighted Arafa i mean there's so many but just very quickly what stands out the know, most for, for me Arafa just reminded me of an ayah alastu bi rabbikum that we allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know in I just and and everybody's just saying yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my lord for me that is like a worldly <laughs> that is for me the worldly like feeling of alastu bi rabbikum and everybody saying but like everybody saying yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my lord um that for me was arafa and um after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an opportunity to be gathered back there again with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam amen amen and and with that we're going to leave it there um salima shukran so much for being here and sharing the, um your experience your journey of a lifetime with us and may allah makbul your duas amen, and shukran. grant you more than what you've asked for inshallah amen jazakallah khair Wonderful Salima Jaffa, project coordinator for Planet Mercy South Africa and a student of Alawiya Hussein in Nawi Zawiya, um, speaking to us about her Hajj journey and of course Hajj and women um, on Hajj as well. Um, very inspirational and may Allah accept uh, the du'as inshallah.